Hello everyone. Today I will be discussing the concluding part of uterine polyps be it be endometrial, cervical, fibroidal or placental. In the part 1 of this lecture we have discussed all about the etiology, pathology, pathogenesis, everything. So let us conclude it. It is an important point in your AUBs, the palm Cohen classification. So we are talking about polyps. What are the clinical features? How a patient presents? For all the undergraduates and postgraduates, I want to emphasize that you will get two sorts of question in your theories. In general, they ask about management of anything, right? So, management consists of symptoms, that is what your patient is telling, signs, what you as a doctor are visualizing, investigations and treatment. So, in this lecture, we will be discussing the management of polyps, right? And the first lecture was all about your understanding that why the following clinical features will be visible in a case of polyp. So, clinical features of endometrial polyp. As we know, there are four different kinds of polyps which we are dealing with. So, every polyp has different presenting features. Even after eliciting the history, you can say that yes, it could be this or it could be that. Most of the endometrial polyps are symptomless. If they are small in size, they generally do not cause any symptom and this is accidentally discovered. Accidentally discovered means the patient comes for some other complaint, you are examining the patient and you find that there is a polyp. So, either while you are doing some per speculum examination and you see a polyp coming out or on your HSGs or hysteroscopies, you may find that there is some filling defect, right? Or in your ultrasounds, you are doing some sonography and you find that there is a polyp. Clinical features of cervical polyp. Cervical polyp means what? As we have discussed, something which is either arising from the endocervix or from the ectocervix. Since it is in the outer world, like it is inside the vagina, it will create symptoms. What it will do? Irregular uterine bleeding because sometimes it can also cause contact bleeding. It is coming out, it may become raw and it may cause irregular uterine bleeding in both the pre and post menopausal women. Contact bleeding, post intercourse bleeding, bleeding any time. Patient will complain that there is a spot of blood which comes and then it stops. Excessive vaginal discharge which could be offensive. See this thing is lying inside the vagina and this is a foreign body for the vagina. It can cause excessive whitish discharge, offensive smelling. The patient may complain that it is lots of foul smelling discharge. I am having on and off spotting per vaginum. Multiple endometrial polyps may cause infertility or miscarriage in some of the women. But in cases of cervical polyp, you may find vaginal discharges which are offensive and irregular bleeding per vaginum. What are the signs? That is what you would see as a doctor, as a clinician. Unless the polyp is at or outside the external os, no positive findings. See, if we are talking about polyps, if they are somewhere here, somewhere here, you cannot see them. If it protrudes out or it is coming out from the external os, yes, you can see on a per speculum examination. When you will touch it, what it is? We have seen in the pathogenesis, it is just under the effect of estrogen, the hyperplastic endometrium or the hyperplastic epithelium. So, it is soft, slippery and is very small in size. Generally, you see a tongue like projection which is very soft. On per speculum examination, it looks like reddish in color because I told you in my last lecture, it is the epithelium which is transparent and it is highly vascular. Because of the high vascularity, it looks brilliantly red in color and usually attached with a slender pedicle. It is, the pedicle is very, very small, thin. So, in this picture, you can clearly see it is a self-retaining cusco speculum which we have applied and this is the cervix. This is the external os of the cervix. Can you make out? And this is the os and you can see a red fleshy, absolutely red thing coming out and probably it is arising from this place where this is a very, very small slender pedicle. Now comes the fibroid polyp. We have already discussed the endometrial polyp and the cervical polyp. Now, fibroid polyp, what does that mean? In most of the cases, it is a submucous fibroid which starts 
protruding like this, this, this and one fine day it comes out. So, in my last lecture also I discussed that because of the pressure symptoms, it may become hemorrhagic, necros or whatever changes are going to happen, they are going to happen at the base, that the protruding part of this fibroidal polyp. Since it is a fibroid, so it will create problems, it will create symptoms like a fibroid. So, these happen in patients who are mostly in reproductive period. Intermenstrual bleeding, definitely, because it is inside the vagina, it is similar to a cervical polyp, but because this is a big mass, it would not be a spotting, it would be a bleeding, often continuous, especially in fibroid polyp, which are arising from the body, because if it is arising from the body, it will give symptoms like a fibroid. Colicky pain in the lower abdomen due to uterine contractions. Why uterine contraction? For uterus, it is a foreign body and whatever foreign body is there in the, our body, the body tries to expel it out from the least resistance pathway. So, if it is a fibroidal polyp, the uterus will try to expel it out through the cervix. Since it's a, it is attached, it will not get expelled out and the patient will experience pain, pain just like labor pains. So, colicky pain in the lower abdomen due to uterine contraction in an effort to expel the polyp out of the uterine cavity. So, the patient will come definitely, since this thing is lying inside the vagina, you can have offensive vaginal discharge as we read in the cervical polyp. You will have irregular bleeding, heavy bleeding and pain. Pain is conspicuous for fibroid polyp only. In cases of cervical and endometrial polyp, you generally do not find pain. Excessive, offensive vaginal discharge and the sensation of something coming out and dragging down because it is heavy. It is like it can be 5 centimeter, 8 centimeter huge fibroidal polyps we have seen. So, because of this, the patient will feel something is coming out the vagina. I am feeling dragging sensation, heavy sensation. And in some very few cases, it may remain asymptomatic also, but it is a very, very rare condition. Otherwise, pain, something coming out per vaginum, dragging sensation, bleeding, vaginal discharge. Now, what will you look in case of a fibroidal polyp? The patient has come, we have already elicited the history. Now, according to the history, we have formed a diagnosis in our mind. Now, on general examination, what will happen in a case of fibroidal polyp minded? There would be anemia. Why? Because it is a fibroid that to a submucous fibroid, it will bleed torrentially and the patient will be having various degrees of anemia. Pelor, you can see the conjunctiva, the nails, the tongue, everything. On a per vaginum examination, you will find, you know what is a per vaginal examination, right? A bimanual examination where your one hand is inside the vagina and over the abdomen and you are trying to palpate the uterus in between. So, the uterus is bulky. The cervix may be patulous. Patulous means what? Khul gaya hai, opened up because something is trying to come out. The cervix is patulous and the tip of the polyp is felt or else the polyp is felt distinctly. What does that mean? This means there are two conditions. Either the fibroidal polyp is still lying like this. So, you can feel the tip with the fingertip or it has totally come out of the os. So, you will feel the patulous os and the whole polyp you can grasp inside your hand. Both of the situations can be there. In a speculum examination, like the patient is lying and you have applied a speculum, so you will be looking at the mass directly if it has already come out of the cervix. So the size of the color of the polyp can be seen, the polyp can be plain if it is like it has just come out of the cervix then it will be pale because generally the fibroid is a pale structure with a world appearance. But if it is a long standing disease and the fibroid had come out very very uh, earlier then you can find hemorrhagic things, necrosic things. Whereas the attachment of the pedicle to the cervix can be visualized but attachment higher up cannot be seen. This applies to all the polyp. If it is arising from nearby thing, you can actually feel, you can see that there is a pedicle which is being attached. But if it is coming from the fundus like this, like this, you will not be able to feel the pedicle, you will be only able to see the mass. Now investigations. I hope I am making myself clear that by clinical features only we are able to distinguish what we are dealing with. Endometrial polyp mostly asymptomatic, but yes, there can be complaints of bleeding. 
सर्वाइकल पॉलिप जनरली स्पॉटिंग पी वी नॉट हैवी ब्लीडिंग बट ऑफेंसिव वजाइनल डिस्चार्ज कुड बी देयर बट इन केसेज ऑफ फाइब्रोडल पॉलिप देयर इज एनीमिया हैवी ब्लीडिंग पेन डिस्चार्ज समथिंग कमिंग आउट एवरी थिंग सो फाइब्रोडल पॉलिप इज द मोस्ट डेडलीएस्ट पॉलिप वॉट इन्वेस्टिगेशन ट्रांस वजाइनल सोनोग्राफी इन मोस्ट ऑफ द गाइनी केसेज ट्रांस वजाइनल सोनोग्राफी गिव्स यू अ वेरी वेरी गुड आइडिया अबाउट द यूट्रस वॉट वुड यू सी यू वुड सी लाइक इन अ ट्रांस वजाइनल सोनोग्राफी यू वुड सी अ पॉलिप एंड द फीडर वेसल साइन देर वुड बी अ ब्लड वेसल विच विल बी कमिंग इन साइड द पॉलिप विच विल शो यू दैट दिस इज अटैच एंड द पेडिकल इट विल बी हाईलाइटेड विद द फीडर वेसल साइन देन saline infusion sonography i had discussed it in detail then again also i will be talking about it what do we mean by saline infusion we put a catheter inside the endometrial cavity and fill the cavity with normal saline and with the in the presence of normal saline the cavity is distended so we can easily make out a polyp otherwise if the cavity is flat as in cases of transvaginal sonography then your eyes have to actually delineate but in cases of cis or saline infusion sonography the polyp is lying inside the saline and it is easily and beautifully seen so this is appreciated much better in cases of sis and hysteroscopy definitely what is hysteroscopy we are putting a telescope through the vagina inside the cervical canal and into the endometrial cavity hystero means uterus and scopy means to visualize so we see directly what is inside the uterine cavity and mostly the polyp is easily located and the advantage is in the same sitting you can also remove the polyp see this is what i was talking about the feeder vessel sign this is whole uterus this is your transvaginal probe and you can actually see the boundaries of the uterus right and this homogeneous echogenic thing this white white black black thing is the myometrium and inside you can see a structure you can make out a structure with the feeder vessel sign that means this is the pedicle which is feeding which is giving the vessel to the endometrial polyp you may find such pictures in your examination and then your viva starts or your theory paper starts this is a hysteroscopic look of a polyp see we have put a scope inside through the cervical canal this is the anterior uterine wall this is the posterior body wall and this is the polyp very nicely seen with a pedicle so either for a diagnostic purpose you have already diagnosed that it is a polyp and you can cut it shave it off from here in the same sitting in a hysteroscopy to remove this polyp now comes the treatment once you have reached the diagnosis now what about the treatment treatment is surgical you have to remove the polyp so removal of polyp or multiple polyps is the best option if it is seen from outside you can avulse it but you will have to cauterize the base so that there is no recurrence right but if it is inside the uterus you have to go for hysteroscopy so hysteroscopic polypectomy polypectomy means complete removal of the polyp via the hysteroscopic route is the treatment of choice nowadays for polyps earlier days dilatation and curettage plus polypectomy was done now also you can do it if you are able to see the polyp properly and you know that here is the base and you are easily able to cauterize it then you can go for dnc and polypectomy but for all examination points of view hysteroscopic polypectomy is the treatment of choice endometrial polyps like every polyp we do not need to remove all the polyps if it is a small endometrial polyp which is benign which is not doing any trouble to you we can leave it like that in cases of reproductive age group but those polyps which are causing infertility which are post menopausal because the malignant change is very common in post menopausal bleeding or the patient is having abnormal uterine bleeding she is like okay, i am having bleeding now and then she is symptomatic then in that cases you have to remove the polyp so in other words this gives you the answer that what are the indications of surgery either it is post menopausal or you suspect some malignant change there is infertility there is aub abnormal uterine bleeding you need to remove another exam question that you have removed the polyp and then the polyp is formed again 
what could be the reason? Most common incomplete removal, people try to evals it out, they just pull it out, but it is not like that. You have to remove it from the base and then cauterize the base, that is the complete removal. Persistence of the cause leading to polyformation, what does that mean? Polyp was formed because of the higher estrogenic state. So, if the hormonal levels do not change, the basic thing does not change, the polyp may form again. And third is malignant changes. So, exam question, what can cause recurrence? Incomplete removal, most common. Persistence of the cause, that is the estrogenic environment and the malignant change. With that, I conclude the polyp. And I hope this will give you a good overview of how to manage a case of a polyp. Thank you.